What's going on, everybody? Robert and Colton from Bridging the Geekdoms here. What's up? And uh, we got some big news for you guys uh, this week, and we've got some cool things going on in our little podcast world here, and we're going to get to those in a second. But how are things going with Colton right now? Eh, they're going. They're going. Same shit, different day. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much just how it goes anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so monotoned at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So as I alluded to just 12 seconds ago, we have an awesome giveaway going on right now. It's a little thing that's going on uh, where we are giving away Avengers Infinity War digital codes. Now, Avengers Infinity War is coming out digitally on July 31st. That is this Tuesday, I believe. Uh, that, that's when it's coming out. So uh, you have a chance to win yourself a free digital code. Now, the only thing is, is as of right now, we have five left. So by the time you hear this, you may not get a chance to get it, but... If you're listening to this, you know, still find out. We're posting stuff on our Facebook group, on our Twitter, everything like that. You can see and follow along with how many we're giving away still and how many left and how many we have left. Now, the reason why we're doing this is Vudu, the streaming service. They're a big streaming service who does, you can rent movies, you can uh, buy digital movies and watch them on your home devices, tablets, computers, Xboxes, Playstations, all that kind of stuff. You can watch their movies there. Well, Vudu is having a viewing party on August 3rd. It's like 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m., Uh, Pacific time. They want people to jump on Facebook and have a discussion of the movie, share gifts, share memes, uh, talk to Joe and Anthony Russo who are hosting the event. They will be part of the viewing party. You could talk to them, ask them questions, stuff like that. Now, obviously, they're probably not going to give anything away for Avengers 4, but that would be cool if they did. Uh, But they're also going to have prizes they're giving away, such as like a 4K TV, replicas of Captain America's shield, Thor's hammer, uh, Thanos' Infinity Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, They're giving away some action figures and signed posters and stuff like that. So it's going to be a a freaking great time. Absolutely great time. So how do you get this digital code? The ones that we're giving away, how do you get that? Well... It's funny you ask. Um, so what you do is you go to our Patreon. Okay, Patreon. We have a Patreon under Nerd Talk Lips Podcast Network. What you need to do there is become a patron for as little as $1. If you go become a patron for, again, as little as just $1 a month, $1 a month, you become a patron, guess what? You get a digital code. We got five left as I'm speaking right now. We got five left. You go become a patron, $1 a month. The code is yours. Then you can join in on the viewing party on August 3rd and have a chance of winning some of those cool prizes and talk to Marvel fans like yourself. I think it's going to be fantastic. I think it's going to be fun. I am going to be there uh, enjoying myself, talking to people. I think, Colton, you're going to try and get there, right? Yeah, I might be on. So we're going to try and get there. I, I'm going to be there, like I said. I think Deej from their Talkalypse Podcast Network, he's going to probably try and get on there. I don't know if he works or not, but I think he'll try and jump on at least for a little bit. It's a great time, and it's such an easy way to get yourself a free copy of Avengers Infinity War. It's that simple. So we have five left as I'm talking right now. Uh, After you listen to this, or honestly, just stop listening right now. Jump on our Facebook, jump on our Twitter, and say, hey, do you have any left? I'll let you know. If so, boom, you can jump on our Patreon, become a patron, and we will send you your code immediately thereafter. Once you sign up, you will get your code. And it's amazing. It's awesome. It's fun. Uh, I can't wait for this whole thing. I, I think it's amazing. I think this is one of our coolest giveaways that we've done so far. I'm excited about it. Colton, you excited about it? Yeah, I'm excited for it. <laughs> uh, but again, Avengers comes out this uh, Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, uh, July 31st. So it's coming out soon. If you don't have a pre-order, this is your chance to get it uh, for free. So it's pretty wow. awesome. I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. So... There's our little ad for for the day and our giveaway. Uh, I, I want to thank Voodoo real quick for uh, getting us involved with this and, and have, letting us do this for our giveaway. I think it's pretty cool of them. And I look forward to seeing how this viewing party uh, goes on because I hope that we get to be involved in the future yeah. with other ones. Head us up, Voodoo. Yeah. So, all right. So, this isn't going to be too long of an episode, I don't think. Uh but we've got some stuff to talk about that's been going on in the news world. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, though. <laughs> real quickly, though. Uh, Colton and I went and saw Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah. Some day. may say there was a fallout. I, I don't get it. Of friendships. I, I still don't get it. Nuclear stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> I still don't get it, but okay. Fallout, the video game, uh, almost happens. So, non-spoiler, I mean, it still just came out a couple days ago. Uh, we're recording this a day earlier than normal. Yeah. Uh, normally, we give out spoilers. I'm not going to give out spoilers here, because uh, even though it's made a crap ton of money, yeah. uh, I still I still want people to go see it. So, what did you think of it? Uh, it was good, considering the last Mission Impossible I watched was Mission Impossible 2. Which is unfortunate, because yeah. like I said, like I was telling you, like if you've seen, you know from Mission Impossible 3 forward, mm. this is kind of the culmination of all of that. Everything that's happened since Mission Impossible 3 kind of comes to a head or an end. Mm. Not an end, but, you know, it comes to, like, a nice little conclusion yeah, of, of, that this, story. of that story arc, and uh, which is kind of cool for Mission Impossible because it, even if you've watched, like, 1, 2, 3, uh, Ghost Protocol and, and Rogue Nation, like, they're all very... Um, much their own little story. Yeah. Like, they don't normally connect to the previous one. There's been little connections here and there. Yeah, enough for it to be a universe. But it was really interesting how they found a way to connect this movie to nearly all of them. The yeah. only one that I didn't see a connection to was Mission Impossible 2, uh, yeah. which is, you know, it, but it, it does even connect to the first Mission Impossible, which I thought mm. was was amazing as well. So I think it was fantastic. I don't, I, I look, I'm saying go see this movie. It's the best action movie that's out there right now. Uh, you'll have a blast. Henry Cavill is amazing. It's so cool to see him in a different role than what we've seen him in, you know, such as Superman, yeah. and the man from Uncle and stuff like that. He's a really cool character in this. I, I, can I, I'm gonna say one spoiler. Yeah, Superman says a swear. Yeah, he says fuck. Yeah, like it made me so confused on <laughs> a spiritual like, level. What? So <laughs> the only time that's appropriate. <laughs> uh, again, he was phenomenal in it. I love Tom Cruise in these movies. People always ask me like, why do you like Tom Cruise so much? What about his Scientology crap? Yeah, I don't agree with the Scientology crap, but the cool thing about it, he doesn't go around preaching it. So as long as he doesn't go around preaching it and trying to force people into Scientology, keep making damn good movies. I'm going to keep watching them. That's what I say. I, I think he was fantastic. And uh, for me, this isn't the best Mission Impossible. I yeah. know a lot of people are saying this is the best mission yet. I'm not going to say it's one of the... No, I'm going to say it's probably up there tied with my favorite or right underneath. Now, my favorite is Mission Impossible 3. Uh, what... Uh, what um, what's his face? Um, the Philip the Seymour face. Hoffman, there you go. Uh, the bad guy, and Mission Impossible 3 did with his character. I, I just feel still to this point is the best bad guy that we've had in the Mission Impossible series. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of how personal the entire story of that movie felt, I just think it's the best of the Mission Impossible series. Yeah. But Fallout, dude, is, like, right there. Yeah, it was pretty tits. It's, like, right there with it. It, it is so damn good. So go see that movie. Absolutely. We recommend it. Go see it. Uh, with that, uh, I also went and saw Teen Titans go to the movies today with my son. And so so the Teen Titans didn't go to the movies Oh today. no! They, no, they they went to the movies. Oh, nice. yeah, they actually go to the movie. <laughs> no, do they watch their own movie or are they watching well, another here's, movie? Here's the whole concept of it. So, uh, the Teen Titans, you know, they're looked upon as like a joke. Like they're not they they're not taken seriously. They're not considered superheroes because you know they just they goof around a lot. Yeah, you know, like they're they, like me. They dance and sing when they're fighting bad guys and stuff like that, and people just look like you're a joke. Like you're not real superheroes. Well, then. If they find out that all the superheroes are going to the premiere of Batman's new movie and they're like, oh, we want to go. So they try to go and they go to the red carpet and they get held back like, you're not on the list. And they're like, but we're the Teen Titans. They're like, nope, you're not on the list. So they find their way to get in there and they see that Batman uh, or that they're making movies about all of Batman's characters. Yeah. Alfred, <laughs> Batmobile, nice. the utility belt. Fucking Nice. <laughs> All and, of which I would go see. And Robin's getting upset because they're like, you know, they start like, you know, next year, you know, one of Batman's greatest, you know, or best friends or something like that. And Robin's mm. like, it's happening. I'm getting a movie. And it's like his utility belt, you know, it's like, and Robin just it's gets like, upset. Now, Robin is like the main proponent of the, of the, you know, of everything. He's like, I, I think we deserve to have a movie. Like, you know, we're yeah. cool, especially me. Like, you know, what the heck? So that's kind of the driving force, and they find out that the reason why they don't get a cool, they don't get a movie made out of that or from them is because uh, they don't have an arch nemesis. So then they go off trying to find an arch nemesis. They run into Deathstroke, which they actually don't call him Deathstroke at all. Deadpool. Uh, uh, because I think the reason why they don't is because it is a kids' movie, and I think mm -hmm. they kind of kept the whole death thing out. Although there was a pretty dark scene that happens in the movie because there's a moment where the Teen Titans go back in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go back in time to where uh, 
Kal-El is being sent off of Krypton, and they yeah. save Krypton so he doesn't get sent off. They go to Themyscira and take uh, Wonder Woman's uh, lasso away from her and when she's a little kid, so she's sitting there crying. And then they go to Gotham. They go to Gotham, and <laughs> they stop Bruce Wayne's parents from being murdered. Okay? So then they go back in, in, to, in, you know, back in time. So they go back to the future, and they're standing there, and they're like, "Whoa! Like the world is shit because there's no superheroes now." Yeah, you know. So the world's in shambles. So like, who would have thought that would happen? Well, let's go back and fix everything. So they actually go back in time. They this give, is just all kinds of fuckery. They give they give Wonder Woman her lasso back. They destroy Krypton, and they go to. <laughs> <laughs> they go back to Gotham and this is where I thought it was kind of like dark and I actually heard a couple parents in the theater go whoa like it was dark so they go up <laughs> they go they stop because they, they, they catch Bruce and his parents walking out of the theater you know from seeing Zorro which there's a cool little uh, Easter egg in that scene so if you watch it Try to remember that scene and tell me if you saw see the Easter egg. I don't think you will, but it's a cool Easter egg. I, I thought it was kind of cool. But uh, they're about to walk. Like, initially, when they went back in time to stop it, they were like, don't go down Crime Alley. Are you crazy? Go down Happy Alley. You know? And <laughs> <laughs> the simple alternative. <laughs> Exactly. So they they come they come back and they they go one of the one or two of the Titans take Bruce. They hold Bruce and they push the parents in the crime alley and then all hears boom boom and wow. see flashes and then Bruce wow. just standing there. You're like, what did they just? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> But uh, again, you know that's kind of the whole idea is is about them getting a movie made. So they run mm. into to Slade Wilson. And uh, you know, he's trying to steal something, and they try to foil it, but uh, he foils their plans, and he gets away. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the the driving force is is getting a movie made, and you know becomes you know you know they, like Slade Wilson. They're trying to make him their arch nemesis and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the driving point of the movie. It's fun time. You know, I laughed quite a few times. Nicholas Cage's Superman was, I thought, brilliant. Like he, it was, he finally gets the role. Yeah, and I thought, you know, he sounded good. Like he sounded good. I mean, uh -huh. I'm not saying he would sound good as a life, you know, yeah. a, like a real life Superman. He'd but probably try to kill kids. Well, his kids in maybe, the movie. Wait, maybe get that reference to the other. Oh, movie. oh, mom there. and dad. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> uh, but again, I I really enjoyed the movie. I'm not going to sit there and say it's oh, it's the greatest uh, animation. Oh, one thing. One thing was really funny. So, this probably had me laughing the most, even though it's not really that funny. So, you know the beginning of the DC movies now, where it shows, like, Batman throwing his, his Batarang, Superman yeah. standing there, you know, Green Lantern with the lantern. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's their version of what Marvel does, showing their characters with the title card coming up. You know, yeah. DC does that now. They made an animated version of that mm -hmm. in the style of Teen Titans Go!, that's bad. <laughs> so I just, I'm the only person laughing in the theater, and I'm just like laughing at that they're doing that. I don't that, think that of how ridiculous the movie is. Because most people there, they're parents with their kids. Like they don't, they probably don't know the universe yeah. like I do. So like they're I'm like, all these this is a kids movie. There was so many times I was the only one laughing in the theater because I caught a reference or you know saw something in the background mm. that just had me laughing because it was just it was so subtle, mm. and only people who really know. DC and the comics and stuff like that would really get it. And, yeah. Uh, I, again, if you're a DC fan, I say check it out because I think you'll you'll appreciate some of the little mm. Easter eggs throughout. Uh, and it's not a terrible movie. Like it's very it's very childish. There's a lot of poop jokes. There are a lot of poop <laughs> right jokes. up my fucking alley. But, uh, there's actually one too many poop joke. I would say like it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, and you're just kind of all right enough. <laughs> all right. So basically, I wrote this movie. Yeah. So. Saw that. I also saw Super Troopers 2 this past week. I thought it was fantastic. I'm not going to mm. say it's as good as the first one, uh, but it definitely is good. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they take, they, you know, they, they do some similar things from the first one, some similar jokes, but not completely the yeah. same. Uh, but it just feels good to see the Broken Lizard team back together and, and, and doing Super Troopers 2. Um, probably my biggest uh, issue with the, the film was Rob Lowe. Uh, I just felt like his character wasn't any good in the movie. I just really didn't appreciate his character. And I'm usually a fan of Rob Lowe, but he, yeah. just, he just didn't really do He's, it for me there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the rest of the movie, funny. Good time. Mm -hmm. If you want a good laugh... Give it a watch if you like. If you like Broken Lizard, if you like Super Troopers, if you like Beer Fest, if you like Ooh, Beer Fest, that's uh, a good movie. Slam and Salmon stuff like that. Check this out because it's Broken Lizard. It's what yeah. it's it's their comedy, and the more people that watch it, I mean this this movie made a lot of money. They're hoping to make a third one, so I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean I liked the first one, so. so. 
I did watch half a truth, truth or dare last night. Did you? Yeah. Um, it's that one like bloom house movie out of the 13, like every, you know how they release like 13 movies a year. Yeah. It's one of the 12 movies that suck. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, the premise is pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, well. I, I haven't finished it to like give a full analysis yet. Well, there you have I it. I fell asleep in the middle ha- yeah. halfway through. I started watching Castle Rock. Uh, uh, is it good? Uh, the first episode. I've only watched the first uh-huh. episode. Um, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's got me hooked. Like, I want to watch I, I got to jump in. I've just been so busy this weekend. Yeah. I haven't been able to get back into I'm it. probably going to take a break from uh, the ranch um, and go to watch it. Orange is the New Black came out this weekend. I haven't, even had, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't even had a chance to look at that. I've been so busy this weekend watching movies, going to baseball games. Doing hood rat shit. Like, just doing stuff. Like, I just haven't had time, so... Uh, hopefully I get a chance to, to check out <laughs> tomorrow you're just a 100% rock. shut in I mean if I don't have to go to work tomorrow I'm probably going to sit here and watch Castle yeah, Rock all day straight so. up just clo- lock the door <laughs> close the blinds Yeah. no one except for the pizza guy is allowed in here maybe that sounds like a good tasty idea Domino's pizza Fox's man Fox's I get Domino's because then they'll un- underdo the bread for you Yeah. undercook the dough yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. And then before we get into the new stuff, I do want to give you my bargain bin review of the week. I forgot to do one last week. Uh, so my Kids bargain bin days. review of this week is a little movie called Pain and Gain. It's a Michael Bay film starring Mark Wahlberg, uh, Dwayne Johnson, and Anthony Mackie. That didn't come out too long ago, did it? Nah, it sounds probably about like five su- or six years ago. Super familiar. Yeah, five or six years ago. Hmm. Uh, don't watch it. <laughs> so, I think uh, I wanted to way back when. Two hours of my life completely wasted. Like downsizing bad or just just bad? It, it's not like downsizing was bad, uh, but this is a different bad. Probably equally bad, just a different bad. <laughs> so it's not breaking the bad. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, it's a story about weightlifter bodybuilders who want to get a taste of a better life instead of living paycheck to paycheck they want to live a better life so what they decide so, to do so is, like everybody else's story yeah so they decide to uh kidnap a a rich guy and try and swindle him out of all of his his money his businesses everything like get take everything from him and they go to kill him and they screw up so now they're trying to and nobody believes the guy that they tried to kill because he you know he comes back and he's like yeah, bodybuilders try to kill me and the police are like you're just an idiot you're, because you're, you're a delusional. drug dealer nobody's gonna believe you you know and yeah and, but he wasn't really a drug dealer that's the thing so they, people yeah. were just like so they didn't believe him and uh it's that's, a muddled that's kind of the story, story. It, it, i mean it's not muddled it makes sense it's just not good it just is not good. It was one of those, we wrote this in 20 minutes and I, I, we were the, stoned. The best part of the movie was Dwayne Johnson. Like, it was interesting seeing him play a bad guy, kind of mm-hmm. kind of a bad guy, you know, because he, normally we always see him as the good guy. Like, yeah. It's rare we see him as a bad guy. And uh, there's a moment where he's like high on fucking cocaine out of his mind. He's Same. fucking blitzed out of his mind on coke. And it was interesting seeing him play that. You know, like, mm-hmm. it was like, that's a weird role for The Rock, you know? So. Yeah, did he give a rock bottom to anybody? Uh, no. Did he drop the people's elbow? No. Damn it, not a good yeah. movie then. Yeah. Yeah, he's done that in some of his action movies. I know, and that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do it in this. You see the people's elbow come out, it's awesome. Yeah. But I didn't, before watching it, I didn't know that Anthony Mackie was in it. Anthony Mackie mm-hmm. is the Falcon in, in Avengers. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, well, that's, uh, I didn't know he was in this. And this was before Avengers, you know, so it was like. Yeah. Oh, wow. He yeah. really was a no name before, yeah, like, before Marvel. Weird. So, yeah, um, I think that's it for what I've done this week. It was a lot, uh, a lot. A lot I, I started stuff. writing stuff. What'd you write? Uh, I'm starting to shape my universe more. Mm. I'm starting to break it down. Good times. Good times. Found out in Greek mythology, there's this, like, god of creatures type thing who has, like, fucking dragons for hands, and he's, like, a giant human. It's crazy. I can't pronounce his name or else I'd say it. Uh, This just in, it looks like we're about to get another uh, patron, so that's going to be down to four uh, codes left. So as of this moment, we have four codes left. So hopefully you get a chance. Hopefully I didn't say all that in the beginning for no reason. Hopefully you get a chance to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> all right. Sorry. What were you saying? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, why don't we just jump into to some of the news? Uh, last week we it was all Comic Con stuff. It's kind of the comic book yeah. area stuff has kind of calmed down a bit. We haven't had much news in that regard yeah. because of that. It was like herpes that flared up. Yeah, pretty much. And now it's gone. Uh, probably. 
the biggest news that came out this week, and this is kind of where we're just going to stick for the day, I think, uh, is Star Wars Episode Nine has released bum, their cast. Bum, 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 bum. So, their cast includes Daisy Ridley. Your boy. Um, Skinny penis. No. <laughs> um, the black guy. Um, I can't remember his name. John Boyega. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, the other guy. Um, <laughs> this is how bad I am with names. Uh, the dude, the the Poe. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, well, I can't remember his name now either. I, I um, have it here. Here we go. Adam Driver. Oh, no. <laughs> here. I'm just going to go through the list I have. Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Adam Driver, Oscar Isaac. There we go. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o, Kelly Marie Tran. Dom Hall, Dom Hall Gleason, Eunice Su- Suatomo, uh, that's Chewbacca, Anthony Daniels, Jimmy V, he's playing R2-D2, and Billy Lord. Those are all the official, like, the, the big ones. And they were like, hey, here's all these people. But they're going to be joining the uh, veterans, Mark Hamill, dun, dun, dun. Billy D. Williams, dun, dun, dun. and Carrie Fisher. Wow, 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 wow. Um, as well as Naomi Aki and Richard E. Grant. So, that's the official cast. Now, remember, there was... Uh, Carrie Russell was supposedly up for a part. She's not on here. Uh, she's not mentioned here of being in the cast. So, whether they're trying to keep it a secret that she was actually cast or not, we'll see what happens there. But probably the biggest interesting thing is Carrie Fisher. Yeah. So, I remember shortly after she passed away the rest in spaghetti never forgetty you know we were having the a discussion mm. are they going to recast her are they going to cgi or what are mm. they going to do for her and i said you know it'd be interesting i bet you they're going to do this they're going to use unused footage of carrie fisher from episode seven and episode eight i was like i bet you that's probably that they'll, they could do something like that yeah because at the time i was like no recast and no cgi because that's how i was feeling mm. at the time I've since was like, you know what? I wouldn't mind a recast. Like, you know, yeah. I, I would be okay with it. I don't want the CGI, but I wouldn't mind a recast. Well, Disney has said, like, no, we were never going to CGI her. Never going to do yeah. that. And we never had any intentions of recasting her. So with the blessing of Billy Lord, Carrie Fisher's daughter, they are going to be utilizing footage, unused footage, from Star Wars Episode, episode 7, The Force Awakens, in this movie. So how do you think that's going to play out? Um, well, there's going to be something about them having to escape, probably, or some, some urgent things coming up that she has to go to the, I don't know, they're probably, well, this is, this takes place during a time, there's like a time jump between eight and nine, right? Rumor has it, again, a lot of it's rumor, rumor has it that we're going to see years between the two movies. We don't know though. Mm. Like we're not going to know until the movie comes out, you know? So I'm going to go off the assumption there's that, and there's going to be a new government and there was some sort of like scene that she filmed in Seven that she was going to go to the, I don't know, New Galactic mm-hmm. Senate or whatever it was before it got blown up, and she's going to go and then either not come back or die and during the mission or whatever. And I that, agree. I think something that's, like that's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. I think that yeah, there's going to be something where she's going to have a conversation, and there's then there's going to be a throwaway line, not a throwaway line, but there's going to be a line at some point that says that she's on her way somewhere. Yeah. And then five minutes later, they're going to come and say. Leia's ship was destroyed. Yeah. And I think that's how they're going to do it. And she's not going to space float away from that one. Yeah. So, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I'm, I, I, you know, uh, you said it earlier in the week after we heard this news, you're like, oh, there's going to be some, you know, wet eyes at yeah. that, you know? It's like, I, I was thinking, I was talking to my mom today, or yesterday, and I'm like, you know, everybody cried during episode eight, you know, because mm. it was like, this is the final time we get to see her. And we all cried then. Yeah. This now will we're gonna be have to cry the again. real last time we see her. <laughs> we're going to have to cry again. Uh, I, I'm happy that they, they found a yeah. way to bring her in. I am. Uh, I, I think probably, I do... probably won't get emotional this time. Not as nearly as emotional as the first time. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, nah, well, she's dead, obviously, so yeah. like you can't bring her back. <laughs> I just think it's... I know that there's some people that don't think, don't think they're going to kill her off. It would be dumb not to, though. Now, here's the like, thing. This is why people are saying that they don't think they're going to kill her off. Because some other news came out this week, along with this information of who's cast in the movie. And they are stating that this episode 9 will be the conclusion of the Skywalker saga. So people are saying, well, if it's the end of the Skywalker saga, you don't have to kill her off. 
because there's no need to bring her up again ever again yeah. after this. So, big question. How do you feel about them ending the Skywalker song? Uh, uh, well, well, you said it when, we, <laughs> when I was talking about the theory, I think. And they're probably going to take like a, what, six, seven year break from it? Ten year break? While they do the other two trilogies mm-hmm. they have and then go back to it. Be like, yeah, this is the ending for now. Yeah. Uh, but like at that point, she she would, assuming there would be another time jump. Yeah, uh, she would be dead of old age. <laughs> like, you can't you can't save her and then try to keep her there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's. I don't know. Like I mean, they could. I guess. I mean, she would just die of natural causes, but. I think it would just be better writing and better for the character. She died on, like, a diplomatic mission or something. Yeah. My problem is this here. Ending the Skywalker saga. You can't do it. You just, you can't do it. You can't. I, I know people are, there's people that try and sit there and say, oh, we're, we're Star wars out. We want something different. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you're getting with the other two trilogies. Here's the thing, Okay. Give me a Knights of the Real Republic remake, and I'll be content. <laughs> look at, let's look at Star Trek. And I know, ew, I know, ew. ew. Some people don't like Star Trek. Ew. But, but let's get the it. fuck out of here with this shit. Star Trek: The Next Generation had a hundred episodes, something like that. More than a hundred episodes. I don't know. I've watched it a couple times. I don't know how many episodes. There's a bunch Dang. of episodes. Okay, that follows Jean Luc Picard and the crew of the Enterprise. You have the same characters for 100 plus episodes. So that's, they're each 40 minutes to an hour long. You know, plus we got, what, four or five movies with them? Yeah. So that is 40. characters that people loved that yeah. we saw a whole crap ton of stories for. You take a look at the Skywalker saga. We've had eight movies, eventually nine movies. Yeah. Okay. That's what we've gotten. Hardly the amount of what Star Trek has been, and mm. Star Trek is is applauded. It's people love it, love the Next Generation, everything like that. They love those stories, they love those characters. I love the Skywalker characters. I don't think that they, they need to end the Skywalker saga. The Skywalker saga is what made Star Wars. That's yeah. what makes Star Wars. That's what's going to push Star Wars forward into the future. I think what they're doing, and you hear it, heard it here first. The date of this recording is. The 29th, July 29th at 6.41 p.m. Way to date the episode. <laughs> I'm saying it here that they're saying this just to get butts in the seats. Yeah. And in five or ten years, they will announce, you thought it was never coming back. Episode 10. You know, and that's yeah. what's going to happen. Uh, I, I just, you can't end the Skywalker saga. I'm sorry. Ray is not a strong enough character to continue on a, a, a saga of her own and make about another family yeah kylo ren he could be a strong enough character if they find a way to redeem him i still don't think he's redeemable yeah. but if they find a way to redeem him but then he's a skywalker and you continue it so they're either going to kill him off mm-hmm. because they can't continue on with him or they're just going to end it yeah okay plus you can't i don't think you can do the episodic films you can't continue after nine without some connection to the skywalker lineage yeah. and the skywalker story yeah. All right. And like I said, Ray is not a strong enough character at this point in time to carry it on. If she turns out to be Ray Skywalker, then we'll there'll be a lot more that okay, I would love to see them flesh this out now. Yeah. But if she's Ray nobody, I'm not that interested at this point. And that's kind of interesting last name too. <laughs> that's just kind of where where it is because you don't nobody feels the connection with Ray that they've had that they had with Luke, Leia, Han or Obi-Wan and Anakin. Like, you know, people had connections with those. Nobody and I'm not saying nobody because I'm sure there are some yeah. little kids and little girls and stuff like that that have the connection. I have the connection with But her. with when it comes to like real like the real fandom mm-hmm. like I don't see the connection with Ray that people have yeah. with these other characters. So trying to have her carry a, a saga after you know, without any connection to Luke and Leia and Han yeah. and Chewie and that kind of stuff, I think it would be kind of difficult, you know? And I, I just think that no matter what, if they continue 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that has to always come back around to the prequels, to the original trilogy, to the sequel trilogy. Like, you have to connect to those the things. Trequel tri- the trequel. The trequel. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I agree, but, um, oh no, no, our other episode, never mind, never mind. Um, but if they were to do like a episode ten yeah. with the Skywalker trilogy, Kylo and Ray hook up, 
chosen and, child, and then you have kind of like Anakin all over again. Yeah. And you can retell this f- prequels. You kind of could. Yeah. You kind of could. It'd be, it'd be an interesting, different way of kind of rebooting the entire franchise. Yeah. Where you're not rebooting, it'd be more of, it would be more of a soft reboot than Seven was. Yeah. You know, and then just be could like, do something like that. It'd be interesting. And, and then you don't, then you don't have that like, oh, Force baby question yeah. mark. Yeah. No, he has an origin. Yeah. He has nine movies worth of an origin. Or she. Or she. Yeah. Uh, whichever way they want. Or Jawa. Ewok. Oh, yeah. Ewok. Yeah. Wookie. Wookie. No, that's for Rose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again i just you know this star wars stuff that's coming out you know i, I and believe it or not i haven't heard a lot of people freaking out about it you know like yeah. that, that's kind of surprising especially um, with how cancerous the fandom is now let's get back to the cast a little bit so obviously we got ray you know and, and daisy yeah. ridley we got kylo with adam driver and everybody else uh are you shocked that they're bringing uh kelly marie tran back as rose i mean yeah and not really because she her story we're sort of kind know. of ended. Kind of. I mean, there was like, no, there's, the, uh, there was no, there's no need to bring her back. Like, there's, there's really no need. Like, there's, yeah, okay, her and, and Finn are kiss. They kissed. Okay. I mean, you could write both of those characters off. In exactly. My opinion, like, but, you could write Finn off as well. Like, there's no need to bring them back. But with like the ending of eight, with like it's like five v twenty at that point. <laughs> yeah. They true. kind of probably step into the role of generals at this point. Yeah. Or lead whatever's of some whatever. Kind of leaders of some sort. I so, like, that. they... I mean, it's kind of like the, you, you saw the jump from, you know, Empire to Return of the Jedi, where yeah. you see, you know, like, Han take on a, a bigger role, Lando takes on a bigger role, and stuff yeah. like that. So, I, I mean, I get it. I, I so, get it. I mean, that would be my reason for it. I mean, hopefully they give them a story this time. <laughs> I, I trust J.J. Abrams will utilize the characters better. Or kill them off. Uh, are you surprised that we... Um, Gwendolyn Christie is not on there, Phasma. A little bit, because, like, again, I was, like, Phasma could have been a big character. Like, could have. Yeah. But, no. <laughs> I mean, I think she had less screen time in The Last Jedi than she did in, in The Force uh, Awakens. Yeah. And she, like, permadeathed, apparently. Yeah, which, I mean, okay. I mean, no one comes back from what happened to her, but still, like... Uh, they could have made it. They could have yeah. made a, you know, something. They could have made it where she's all scarred up and like made her really cool. Where yeah. she doesn't wear a helmet. She still wears some of the body armor, but yeah. not a, a mask anymore because her face is all screwed up. Like that would have been cool to see something yeah. like that. Uh, or give her like shades of Vader. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, like, something cool would have been. Yeah, they could have probably done something cool with her. I just, I feel like I, I feel bad for Gwendolyn Christie. I'm yeah. sure she loved her time working with the Star Wars movies. I mean, but, her name's etched in Star Wars now. So. But I just feel bad for her because. You could she tell was, the joy and excitement that she had for these movies, and they just they gave did, her like fifteen minutes. They total. did her, yeah, they did her character dirty. Like they just, yeah. they didn't give her anything substantial to to really grasp onto. And yeah, people sit there and like to try and compare her character, Captain Phasma, to Boba Fett. Yeah. But here's the thing: Boba Fett wasn't talked about he wasn't like it was like Boba Fett's in the movie like yeah, George cool. Lucas didn't go out there while promoting like yeah we got you know um, Jeremy Bullock playing you know Boba Fett and you know we're really excited about it yeah. he didn't say that no J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy they were going around saying we got Gwendolyn Christie for a role in here <laughs> she's going to be a woman stormtrooper how about that crap how cool is that and they're talking her up for so long yeah and then they give her and then they seconds. give her crap you know so when yeah you can try and compare it to Boba Fett but you know the the amount of Boba Fett that we got that we never expected to get more than that. Yeah. You know, like there was no reason to ever expect more than that. Yeah. With Gwendolyn Lee Christie's Captain Phasma, like, we expected like half the movie at least. Yeah, exactly. Like not like, half the movie, but like being a a like, significant a significant role. role. Like I I remember rumors for Episode Eight where people were like, oh, you know, she's out there hunting Finn. Like she's mad at Finn. She's hunting Finn. That would have been an excellent And that's why line. when they're at the, at the Casino Canto bite. Mm. Gwendolyn or Phasma is hunting them there. Like she's yeah. there trying to find them. That would have been cool. That, that would have actually awesome. gave that part of the movie a reason to be there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but no. I mean, the- how cool would it have been? I mean, we're gonna get this in, in, yeah. in something else. But how cool would it have been if instead of them finding Benicio del Toro and his the 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 the, the, the person? <laughs> <laughs> oh my of- God, he's Timmy from South Park. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy fuck! Ha! <laughs> 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 Almost like nine months after the movie came out. <laughs> Holy shit! I blew my own mind. <laughs> but, okay, oh. but let's let's say this. So they go to the Canto Bite to, mm. to get the code breaker, and then to get there. 
but wouldn't it be cool if they think that they find the code breaker and it turns out that it's it's somebody that's working with Captain Phasma and yeah. that's how they get on the ship is that way like how cool would that have yeah. been instead like, of like Benicio del Toro just they paid me more yeah like they paid him more and he just knew what he was doing yeah you know like he's not the code breaker they went for but he knows everything like oh, all right uh, okay cool um you're just giving two characters story yeah for no or, like, reason so cool that, that would have been a lot cooler i think yeah i mean i i still think she's strong enough to have her own standalone like phasma star wars story and just kind of have it like a military yeah movie Get Ron Howard, that military crap that he did in Solo was yeah. better than Rogue One's military stuff. So Exactly. Yeah. You combine both of them. Hell. Yeah. She was abducted as a kid and show her growing through the ranks. That'd be cool. That'd be totally cool. Yeah. I'd, dig, I'd dig it. I'd, I'd be down. A good, like, two-hour movie. Yeah. Two-and-a-half-hour movie. Boom. Then you give her some justice. Yeah. For, like, the... T- 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 Slow um, down to me. Damn it! Um, <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, fuck, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Give her justice for the 15 uh, minutes yeah, of time she, that she got on yeah, screen. There yeah, there we go. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I feel that there's so much when it comes to, to this news that there's a lot to dissect, and I'm just surprised more people aren't dissecting it. Like, there's really a lot to sit there and think about. Uh, you know, again, Carrie Russell was rumored to be cast, uh, or being in talks to be cast as a role, and then people are like, oh, she's going to be Mara Jade, blah, blah, blah. She's going to be this. You know, there's it's a very good potential potential where she's yeah. no connection to Ray at all. She could just be a general. She could be somebody else within the Resistance or yeah. now the Rebellion. Uh, you know, so, like, that's that's who it could be uh, or she could be something very important but to me I think it's a little more suspicious that she's not showing up on the cast list especially yeah. if she was cast and we don't know for a fact if she was because obviously she's not on the cast list but the fact that the the rumors came out it was leaked that she was in talks you're gonna land somebody like Carrie Russell and yeah. that news you know is kind of big so if they did land her and she's not there that's kind of interesting yeah you know like who is she? Exactly, she must be playing something, somebody more important than just a general. We get Mara Jade, and I have to go wash my pants. <laughs> I, I mean, I would love to see Mara Jade. There's also rumor that there's going to be a flashback in Episode Nine of Young Snoke. I think that's stupid. I think it's that's dumb. autistic. Look, I, I just I keep saying this: let go of the Sna- Snoke stuff. Like yeah. it's enough. Like he 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 served he his purpose. Served his purpose. And if you don't know what that purpose is, I'm sorry that you are not smart enough to understand what his purpose was in this movie. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, we all wanted to know who Snoke was, but when you watch The Last Jedi and you see what his purpose was yeah. for the character arc of Kylo Ren, it, it's over. It's you done. don't need to know anymore. It, it's essentially like, like every like we've been saying, he's the emperor from 4, 5 and 6. Yeah, exactly. The emperor like, isn't even in episode 4. He's mentioned well, yeah. in episode 4. He's shown in a hologram in episode in 5, 5 and, and then, then he's, he's in episode 6. But here's the thing. You knew nothing. You knew nothing about him besides what you saw in those movies and heard about him. You didn't learn more about him until the prequels. And I'm not saying we're going to get any kind of prequels to go along with this, but we might get a book. We might get a comic. He might be in, the, yeah. in a video game or something like that. But here's the thing. Did not knowing Palpatine or the Emperor in 4, 5, and 6 hurt those movies? No. no. Does not knowing Snoke hurt these movies? No, 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 exactly. It doesn't matter because <laughs> exactly people are freaking out about it. So, if I mean, if they do it, if JJ gives into the fans mm. and gives them a backstory for Snoke, mm. it is what it is. As yeah, long don't as make it, it long. As long as it, it fits the movie and it doesn't turn into a Canto bite, I'm yeah. fine with that. But you know, honestly, like just leave it alone, people. Snoke yeah. is Snoke. Snoke. That's it. Yeah, we'll get a novel or a comic some at some point. Snoke is Snoke. Like, we got the whole Plagueis no- novel because yeah. everybody wanted to know who Plagueis was. Yeah, exactly. Like, we'll get a Snoke novel. Calm down. <laughs> like, it's Star Wars. They're going to know, they're going to expand that galaxy. Trust me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else was there? I think that's about all when it comes to Star Wars stuff. Uh, that's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the big stuff I wanted to talk about here this week. Uh, there is going to be. Uh, another episode, another show up this week. Uh, we're actually going to be rebooting our <laughs> our uh, episode eight. Well, no, we're rebooting our show. Oh, oh, we're we're rebooting the podcast. Oh, wait, no, we're we're rebooting the reboot podcast about movie reboots. Yes, so we there are we rebooting movie boot. Uh, if you've ever heard our our movie boot podcast, we I think we haven't done one in probably nine or ten months. Yeah, I think the last one we did was Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, that one was yeah. me and you. And then before that, we did half of Terminator One. Yeah, we, we should go back and finish that. We really should. And then we and did the Matrix. The Matrix one's fuck. If you want a good example of that podcast, the Matrix is listen to both parts. Yeah, yeah, definitely like, good. 
definitely. Yeah. They, we they, sat here for what it was four hours that I think night. It was recording. about four hours. You and me and Brian. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to be releasing this week uh, movie boots. Uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi where we mm. sit down and we just talk and say you know what episode 7 is what it is so let's reboot episode 8 yeah. off of episode 7 and let's see how different our ideas were compared to what Ryan Johnson's ideas were and this is not saying that episode 8 was a bad film no, no. we're just doing fan service yes <laughs> yeah uh, let's see I think that's all I got here um, oh Altered Carbon that Netflix show it's coming I back for season wanted 2 wanted to check that out too Anthony Mackie is going to be the lead star in that so I don't know what happened to uh, it wasn't Brian saying something about that yeah he really liked it I, I got I think to like episode 6 and I just couldn't do it anymore so isn't it about like cloning people and shit N- it seems like it not, has that vibe not exactly cloning um, it's kind of where they can take who you are and put you into different bodies. Oh shit! So you're like a f- they can transfer your conscience. Uh, yeah, conscious. Yeah. There you go. So it's kind of oh, interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah. What hour long episodes? Yeah. I figured. So I have two shows to watch. <laughs> but uh, I think that's. Oh, I finished The Office this week for the fifth time. For the fifth time, about that uh, time. Man, <laughs> I always get teary eyed at the last episode. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about. We're going to talk about. Uh, stay tuned this week for our next, uh, or our first or reboot of Movie Boot. That's what I'm going to say. The reboot of the movie. And uh, make sure, reboot, if you reboot. still have a chance, double check if you have a chance to get yourself a free copy of Avengers Infinity War. Yes. Uh, message us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever have you. Just get to us and we'll let you know. Yes, you can still enter in for to get that. Uh, so just let us know if you want to do that. And shout out to Deej over at Nerdtalklips and everything like that. He's been doing some great things with Fandom Vibe. Had some pretty cool episodes out, so listen to those. Been kind of cool. And the dudes at Spoiler Country. Oh, look at you calling out Spoiler Country. Yeah, yeah they're an awesome show. Uh, we had a little conversation on Twitter the other day, so hopefully we can get something planned with them. I'm hoping I can. So there we go. Yeet. Uh, with all of that, I've been Robert. And it's been your boy, Skinny Penis. And take it easy, everybody.